Hey folks, welcome back for more Stationaires. So, uh, last episode, we pretty much finished the materials processing building. And in uh, sort of casting about for what the next project might be, uh, it was sort of suggested that I carry on with the sort of or initial concept of this build, which was that this is not, uh, not something I'm building for myself, but for a future crew. And while thinking about how to proceed in that direction, um, a new update to the game dropped. And this update adds uh, some pretty significant stuff. Uh, there's new centrifuges, including one that's fuel-powered, uh, and new powered chute options, uh, which will add some uh, some interesting logistics options in the future, I'm sure. Uh, and the big thing is uh, the deep mining rig. The deep miner, when you place it and power it, turn it on, will drill down to bedrock and then will produce every 90 seconds or so somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 or 11 dirty ore. Dirty ore can then be ran through a centrifuge to produce ores that are based on the normal ore distribution for your location. It does not do ISIS, though. Uh, along with this new update is the ad additional changes to centrifuges. They're slower now. Uh, they have an internal inventory that has an eject lever similar to the levers on furnaces or these. And uh, they have an RPM that they process faster at, at speed. So uh, project for today, we are going to set up a deep miner and uh, see if we can't get some passive ore production going. top up before we leave. So I decided the best place to put this would be out here next to the materials processing building. We could just bring a chute in through the wall here and drop it straight into our sorting system so that the arc furnace can handle processing. And of course the sorters too, because the deep miner will also return things you can't smell, like coal. So to start with, we're going to place it here, and we're going to place it a little bit lower. We're going to go down one frame. In part, in case I decide to expand the solar section above in the future. I want to make sure we have clearance. So to start with, we're going to do a little drill work. So I'll uh, go ahead and clear this out and then we'll, um, we'll come back. All right. So that's got this opened up a bit. You may want to trim that down too, but uh, we'll worry about that later. I think we have the space that we need. So let's look at our parts. It's a fairly basic build. We've got a stack of frames, stack of steel sheets. This is the deep miner kit. A centrifuge, a stacker, and uh, we've also got a silo so that we can build this up. The centrifuge can't quite keep up with the miner, so once the silo is full, we're going to shut off the miner and let it catch up, and then turn it back on. And that'll be controlled, of course, with an IC-10 chip. So we have those here. Uh, some plastic sheets for the silo. Uh, stair kit. 
power connection stuff. And we're going to finish it out with some uh, flooring and railings. And of course, we've got a bunch of chutes to move all this stuff around. Let's start with our foundational bits. I think I want to take that back a little bit just for cosmetics. Not sure if I need these here or not. I think I may remove those. That is exactly what I had planned. This uh, two-frame block, that's where our miner is going to go. Ladder sure is grabby. While we're here, let's uh, open this up. Now, this is our unloader here, when we drop mining belts in the chute over here. So if we tie in directly behind that, any ore that gets sent here will get sent through the sorting system properly and be handled correctly. Let's go ahead and get that miner built. And there it is. So the ore will come out of the miner into a stacker. And from the stacker into the silo and then this interview. I think we'll move that over one.
Okay. Hydration critical. And that's properly lined up. And we'll go ahead and wire this up before we go have a drink. Alright, that looks pretty good. Okay. So let's uh let's go ahead and get power on this. And we'll put some meaningful names on this stuff. And while we're at it, we're going to set this to maximum stack size. Okay. We're going to get this thing powered up. Because it takes quite a while to get down to bedrock. And then it still takes a bit of time to get, uh, get started on actually producing. In the meantime, we need to get some shoots set up.
in my test builds, I needed 41 shoots. But every time I record or do a test run, something changes. So, got a few extra. I need to get this thing spinning up too. As you can see, it has a contents window just like a furnace. And it also shows the current RPM, which is slowly climbing. Let me set both of these to just stay open all the time. Go ahead and do our tie-in up here. Gonna bring it up so that we've got room to walk under it. There we go. We can go ahead and seal this back up. We've gotten some dirty ore in. Just 10 so far. And of course with this set to a maximum stack size it won't dump until 50. And then it will dump to the silo. Which will automatically dump to the centrifuge. But the centrifuge will get backed up. And that's what the silo is for. Let's go ahead and get our cosmetics so we can pull this locker out of the way. So this is still still filling up. Let's uh, head back. We'll hydrate, and we'll grab the laptop so we can program this chip. All right. So the code for this is fairly basic. We're essentially going to let this fill up. When it's full, we shut this off. When it gets almost empty, we turn it back on. Oh, 
okay. <laughs> I guess that'll do. So I've already got the code ready, but we'll go through it line by line. So my initial thinking had been to include a memory chip that we would then store the state of the drill in. That way, if I were to, say, turn off the power to this system, the drill would, it would check that state when it started back up and set that, set the drill state appropriately. I don't think that's really important because we can just check and see if the drill needs to be on or off. So I have simplified this a bit. We set up our device aliases for the drill and the silo. And we have a register alias for the state the drill is in, one or zero for on or off. And an alias for another register to store the count that the silo has. Then we define the maximum and minimum targets for when to turn the drill on and off. And that's pretty much it for those. The first thing we do is we let it sleep for 10 seconds. This thing doesn't have to update constantly. 10 second delay between passes through the loop should be fine. And then we set the drills on variable to whatever is in drill state, which initially it isn't set. It, I think defaults to zero. Then we read the silos quantity variable into silo count. And then we check if drill state is not equal to zero. If drill state is not equal to zero, we jump down here and handle what to do if the drill is running. Otherwise, we fall through to this section where we handle if the drill is not running. Right here, we take the drill state register, set less than or equal to. This will set a one in this register if silo count, the number in the silo, is less than or equal to the minimum value we have set here. So this will be a one. If the drill is off, we come here and drill state will be set to one if the count in the silo is less than this target of two or equal to. And then we go back to the start, sleep for 10 seconds, and then turn the drill on or off based on whatever is stored in drill state. If the drill is on, we check and see if we're less than or equal to silo max. So the drill state will be set to one and turn the drill on, or keep the drill on, because it's already on if we get here, if the count is less than the max. So in short, if the drill is already running, we come here. If it's less than the maximum, we let it stay running. Otherwise, this will be assigned a zero, because SLT, set less than, will set a zero state to this register if this is not true. Likewise, if the count is not less than or equal to the minimum, it will set a zero state here and keep the drill turned off. This way, it should fill the silo, and once the silo reaches this maximum, it will turn off the drill and not turn it back on until it reaches the minimum at which point it will turn the drill back on, and so on and so forth. I've tested this code. It's a slow process. Probably will not record testing it again. Uh, one thing you can do if you want to test this code is you can lower this number. I tested it by making this a 3, making this a 1, 
and whenever the count in the silo was two, if it was dropping or rising, it wouldn't change the state of the drill. So it seems to work correctly, but, eh, you know, I'm no expert. So we'll confirm that and export it to the chip. Pop it in. Turn it on. Back off. Only two devices to connect the drill. And the silo. Turn it back on. And we should be good to go. As we can see, this turned off the drill, and then it turned it back on after doing its checks. And it will stay on until this count reaches 599. And then it will stay off until it reaches 2. So, as it stands, you can see the centrifuge is processing this dirty ore. If we close this, we can show what happens once it finishes one. And we get one gram of iron ore. I'm not sure what the capacity of the centrifuge is, but uh, I've just been leaving it open so that it can immediately dump it. So it goes into our processing facility and hits the arc furnace. And then, of course, from there it ends up here. And here's where the problem lies. This system is producing ore in single units. The furnace is smelting it. It's going to storage. Unfortunately, there's an issue with this vending machine. Did a little experimenting. Uh, as we saw last time, the stacker that it has, its integral stacker, is not working as expected. And it turns out that it works with things that you can manipulate and divide by hand. Like these steel sheets. I can... Split that stack into two. I can split one. And so on and so forth. The problem is that things that you can't split, ingots, can't be split manually. This can't group those stacks. I'm not sure if that's intended behavior or not. But... This means that if we're going to use this deep mine and allow it to mine unattended with a constant trickle of ore coming in. We're very quickly going to run out of storage spots because we're going to fill up this machine with one gram ingots of iron and copper and everything else. So that means we're going to have to do a proper storage system. I think it's going to be a pain. But we'll see. I'll have to think about it a bit. For now, I'm just going to head out here. And we're going to switch this off. And once we have a uh, storage solution worked out, then we can let her rip. That's pretty much it for this uh, for this system. 
It's not super complicated. As I mentioned, this update does include uh, some other things. There's the gas-powered centrifuge, which apparently you need to manage it a bit. Uh, don't. This one's slow, but I think I'd rather the simplicity of letting it just slowly handle this stuff. Uh, there are also uh, several new types of shoots. And, uh, oh, also, there's a, uh, a counter. You can see it on the portrait. Showing how many days you've been active in this, uh, in this save file. I'm on day 226. The day counter resets at dawn, it seems. And it will also tell you the number of days at the beginning of a day since the last time your character died. However, it does not seem to be accurate, because whenever I load my save file, it says it's been zero days since my last death. Probably because this is an existing save file that predates that change to the game. I'm not sure. At any rate, uh, hopefully this will be a useful bit of information for anybody wanting to try out this new deep miner. Uh... I think the next project is probably going to be something related to storage. But we may also start looking at uh, maybe some crew spaces or uh, mess hall or crew quarters or meeting rooms. Who knows? Because we need to start thinking about the future and who might come to work here and live here. For now, I guess that'll do it for this one. And uh, any thoughts or suggestions or ideas for what the next build could be, feel free to drop a comment below. Uh, I appreciate everyone that's um, stuck with the series this far. Uh, I really do appreciate everyone who takes the time to watch, and especially if you're commenting and giving me your feedback. For now, thank you for watching, folks.